Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Lord, you are truly the Savior of the world. Give me living water that I might never thirst again. Yeah. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sachar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. J Jacob's well is there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. A Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews used nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern? and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give shall never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty, and you do not have, or have to keep coming here to draw water. Now many of the Samaritans at town began to believe in Jesus because of the works. And the woman who testified, he told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thank you. So, in the Word of God today, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, if you don't understand Jewish practice, you know, Orthodox practice, you're, you'd be confused. And, and the confusion comes from that when they say it's a Samaritan woman, it means that She's not a Jew. And, and the famous story of the good Samaritan, because Samaritans had nothing to do with Jews, and likewise. Um, it's, like, it's like two neighborhoods that are squabbling. And they might be of the same ancestry, so to speak, from the same area, but they see themselves as different because of what and how they believe and conduct themselves. So, Jesus in this place was that as a rabbi, right? As somebody with long hair, long beard, and, and if you listen to him for just a few seconds, you understood that he was different than anybody else you'd ever talked to before. So, he asked her for just a simple um, drink of water. And then she brought up, well, you know, Jews have nothing to do with with Samaritans. And first of all, I'm a woman. And if I'm not your woman, right, you're like, 
This is not allowed. And she was there getting water. And in the longer version of the gospel, it explains, you know, that Jesus called her out on, you know, where's your husband? And she goes, I don't have a husband. But she'd had like seven before this, right? And the man she was currently living with was not her husband. So he basically read her soul and told her, you know, who she was, really. Now, you don't get that looking in the mirror. Right? There's, there's a mirror in every dressing room for whatever performance it is. From my fair lady to a stripper. And when people look in the mirror, do they really see who they really are? Do you? I submit no. You don't. You see the surface looking back at you. And in most cases, people look at themselves and they don't see the real beauty that's there. So you have a multi-billion dollar cosmetic industry and hair products so that you can try and look like some kind of stereotype that isn't yourself. And the deepest journey is to be able to look at yourself and journey in and not only see the good, but see the evil, the lack of good in you. Now, Jesus was all about calling out people in their sin. He never, he, he never molly collied them and said, you know, um, well, according to Wolf Doctrine, we're going to have a whole bunch of, you know, sexual deviancy and say it's okay. It's not. You know, I, I, I talked about, some, you know, can I do a whole homily, homily on ignorance? Because ignorance doesn't mean you're stupid. It means you ignore the facts that are in front of you. And if you do that, you become an ignoramus. And it really should be the rubber stamp that somebody gave me. Like every paper that you turn in, it talks about, you know, some crazy leftist idea about who people are and how they should be governed. You know, it should have a stamp on it, you ignoramus. So it isn't our opinion of ourselves that counts. It's a rational, true judgment against a known standard. That standard is not that God doesn't recognize the sin in our lives. It's that he was willing to die to forgive those sins, which you can't forgive. You can't forgive your own sins. You're stuck. And you can say to God in the privacy of your bedroom or wherever that you're sorry to God, but how many people did you hurt? I mean, they, they talked about in the news today, 11 million people who are undocumented, but they're going to vote. They don't have the right to vote, you ignoramus. Because you don't have a policy to bring them in so they can become citizens. You can jabber all you want. Look in the mirror. These policies don't work. They demean people. They rob them of their, their bank accounts. These are not good policies and they don't promote justice, peace, unity, everything that we want in Christ. Jesus loved that Samaritan woman as much as he loved anybody. And he was trying to tell her 
that where you go to find the truth and, and living water that you can live by is found in Jesus Christ alone. You're not going to get it from the President of the United States, no matter who's in power. There's always corruption in politics. And unfortunately, there's always corruption in the church because of sin. And we are all vulnerable to sin. Whatever it is that you're weak to. And you don't think the devil's going to exploit that weakness in you to tear you down. Do you think you come home from college and some infiltrator into the educational system and you come home and challenge everything that your parents believe on, th on Thanksgiving Day? Everything that they've raised you to believe and to know and to understand and you come home with some whack job ideas, does that? Say, I honor my father and my mother. Well, you know the answer to that. Any more than parents who are addicted to substances and can't be good parents doesn't mean the child can't rise above that and become everything that God wants them to be in life. But that's only if you follow God's design. No one ever got hurt, I repeat it over and over again. No one ever got hurt by following the Ten Commandments. Nobody. And that isn't so that it, it demeans you and tells you that you're terrible. No, it says, look, I am there with you. So what do you need, a miracle? You know, Moses hits the staff and water comes out of the rock because everybody's <clears throat> complaining, but they don't have a solution. But God has a solution. Now, there's, there's a big difference. It's just not all, you know, one big pot of everything. We used to call it a melting pot in the United States because people came with all kinds of ideas and places and stuff like that and it became one culture. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. Diversity is not about unity. I'm sorry. By definition, it's not. But that doesn't mean that you don't bring your individual identity from Ireland or, or the Caribbean or South America or where China you come here to a country that was founded on Jesus Christ and that everything that we have comes to us from our creator read the document if you don't you are an ignoramus if you don't know the Ten Commandments you're an ignoramus those things are out there and maybe they're in your house and you haven't cracked the cover on the basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible just means books. But everything that's necessary for salvation is there. And the guide for life. If you don't think that every sin that you see today isn't in the scriptures, you haven't read them. You just haven't read. So be wise. You know, things that are tried and true are just that. We've tried the other junk. It don't work. Communism and atheism never work. Read history. We want freedom for everyone in every place. We want justice everywhere. We want peace everywhere.
But not everybody obeys. So it was Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, I read history. He's the one that started all the national parks that you can go and enjoy. But he also said, carry a big stick. And he went around and put down all kinds of revolutions. Because they weren't good revolutions. Just like the Russian Revolution and the French Revolution were horrible. See Dr. Guillotine. Look, things are not great in this world. But if you follow that which is tried and true, you won't lose. And we're going to go through some stuff, my brothers and sisters. It's not the worst it can be. But if you have Christ, if you have living water in you, you'll survive anything, anything, and everything. My brothers and sisters, it's true that God loves us and he wants us to be happy. But he has set a framework in which to do that. And that's what, if you don't know him and you don't know that God is with you and that he loves you, the way that you go there is by first admitting that you don't know everything. And that... If it's worked for all these other people everywhere in the world, why wouldn't it work for me if I follow the format? You will. And God wants you to have an abundant life, not just any old life, but abundant. To do that requires us not to be ignorant of the truth, but to seek the truth. For Jesus is the way the truth and the life and he wants that abundant life for you may almighty god bless your whole family in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen